All right, hi. Welcome to another fruitful discussion with Mrs. M. So for today, I will um, tackle the introduction of CA2, the non-institutional base corrections. But before proceeding to our proper discussion, it is very important that we need to discuss first the course description and the outline for this subject. All right. So talking about course description, CA2 will primarily focus on the different forms, types, or kinds of non-institutional correctional correction or community-based corrections or non-confinement corrections. So this includes the different methods, the forms, the type, or kinds of clemency. The processes of the grant, the revocation, the cancellation, or the disqualification of the party concerned as provided in law, rules, guidelines, or manual. So meaning to say that your CA2 will not only focus on the advantages set by the non-institutional based corrections, also known as community-based correction, also known as the non-confinement corrections. So it will not only focus on its advantages, but it will also give us a broader knowledge, no? more uh, information as to the executive clemency. I have already discussed in the first semester a little information about that, that when you say executive clemency, this is a type of, of temporary releases that is provided by the Philippine government that the only granting authority is the president. Um, examples or forms of executive clemency are pardon. Another is um, amnesty. You do have also computation of sentence and you do have also reprieve. But we need to remember that it is not only clemency that is being focused on say it to, but also part also probation, okay, which is the granting authority is the judge, and also your parole, which is the um, granting authority is the boards of pardon and parole. And of course, we need to discuss in the CA2 the different um, document and general qualifications in order to qualify in this um, executive clemency and other forms of temporary release that is offered by the Philippine government. So now let's try to look at first the course outline. So for CA2, the first content is criminal justice system and the non-institutional corrections. Advantages and disadvantages of the non-institutional corrections or community-based corrections or non-confinement corrections versus your institutional or confinement corrections. Another very important we need to discuss also the historical account of pardon, amnesty, uh, parole, and probation. Next, total and partial extinction of criminal liability including the relevant provisions of the law on allowance for good conduct, uh, allowance for the good conduct or GCTA, good conduct time allowance, and the special time allowance for loyalty under the PNP, the NPI, the BJMP, the provincial jail, and even the BU Corp. We need to discuss also when is the time that a special time allowance is given to a detained person. Next, content, social and political justifications, early discharge or early release. Okay, another is uh, whether it's through amnesty, whether absolute pardon, conditional pardon, commutation of sentence, or even through good conduct time allowance and probation. Another um, outline for this subject is the various types of clemency. As what I've mentioned earlier, 
We do have pardon, whether it's absolute or conditional. We do have commutation of sentence. We do have reprieve. And we'll need to discuss as well the judicial clemency, like the judicial in a sense that it is uh, the granting authority is the judge, okay? Executive clemency in a sense that the granting authority is the president. Another is you do have the legislative clemency, like decriminalizing certain acts, repealing laws, and also, we do have special clemency like amnesty. Um, a little information lang. Why is it that your amnesty is considered as a form of special clemency? Simply because the in order to grant amnesty, dapat, in order for the president, brother, to grant amnesty, kinahalang there must be a concurrence of the Congress. Meaning to say, in, in simpler term, dapat the Congress will agree majority of the, what's this, majority of the population or members of the Congress must agree, okay, that this group of um, political offenders will be given an amnesty. And if concurrence is obtained, that's the time that the president can extend. Bonang special clemency. Another is processes, petition, application of the grant of pardon, absolute pardon, parole, probation, as provided by the law, the um, IRR, the guideline, the rules, and the manual procedure. That is why I have mentioned earlier in, the, in our discussion for the course description that we will need to focus as well the documentary requirements and the general qualifications in order to qualify for these clemencies. Next, the processes of monitoring, supervision, reporting, denial, disqualification, cancellation, suspension, revocation, early discharge, legal sanctions for violating conditions, and the issuance of release discharge order. Okay? So, those are the outline for this subject. So, based on my other uh, videos, this content or outline for CA2 is not only intended for the prelim period, but for the entire semester. All right? So, I hope you're ready. Now, let's move forward to our formal discussion. Okay, so now, for our module 1, let's talk about the introduction of the non-institutional-based corrections. So, the correctional administration in the Philippines focuses on the modern penology, which do not aim for mere isolation or removal of the perpetrator in the community, but rather on the humane treatment of inmates. Thus, the administration core responsibilities does not end on the rehabilitation and reformation of the inmates or offender, but also give emphasis on making them a productive and useful citizen in the community once granted of full or partial enjoyment of liberty. Based on our previous discussion during the first semester, diba I have emphasized to you that there are two types of penology. One is traditional penology, and the other one, first is a traditional penology, and the other one is the modern penology. We have made emphasis that in the traditional penology, um, it's totally different with the modern. Kaya nga naman, your traditional penology focus more on mere isolation. 
when I say mere isolation, meaning to say it's just the removal of the perpetrator from the community. Removal and then place them in one cell or prison or dungeon. Pagkahuma nothing happens. All they have to do is to stay there as to the number of years which they need to be in prison. And while in the tenure or not the tenure but while being in prison, no programs has been given. No, they are simply deprived of everything. They are being deprived of humane treatment. They are being deprived of a sanitized um, cell or in prison uh, or, or yeah cell or dungeon. Just for in case it's a dungeon, they are being um, deprived of a of a good treatment, humane treatment. They are deprived of of proper separation between man and a woman between a child and an adult, between the severity of the offense and the mildness of the offense. That's the problem with the traditional penology. Maotong, we have emphasized or I have emphasized in our discussion in the first semester, now what happens is that instead of rehabilitating the person, ang mahitabo is that mahimu pa nung silang hardened criminal. Why? Because when they go back to the society, they are angry, they are depressed, no? So, ang mahitabo is that they tend to commit a more serious offense. So, same cycle sa Japan, if they are, if they are, what's this, um, apprehended, and just for in case they are not adjudicated with death penalty, so ang mahitabo, they will be in prison. Motong, it was not effective. So, beer isolation is not effective. So, Motong, from traditional penology, it was then changed to modern penology. Modern in a sense that there is already an acknowledgement of humane treatment. Part of its acknowledgement for the humane treatment is that prisoners were given rights. Rights of of humane treatment, layo sa torture, layo sa verbal abuses, layo sa sexual harassment, and also proper segregation of man and woman, and the gravity of offense. And with the modern penology, our child in conflict with the law are no longer merged with the adult criminal. Aside with that, in the modern penology, programs are given in terms with a spiritual program if you are a catholic or you are a muslim or whatever faith religion you do have you are given the opportunity you are given the opportunity to exercise your faith aside from that um in the modern penology series of rehabilitation programs are given from education, vocational, livelihood. They do have even, um, uh, what's this, mga sports activities just to make them not idle with their current situation. They do have counseling, whether it's individual or group counseling. So, makita na to that in modern penology, it's totally uh, different with the traditional Pero, na ay pero, kaya naman, in the modern penology, if we are going to look at the standards set by the international human rights, kinahanglan mo dapat that in one cell, okay, in one cell, kinahanglan that dili mula pa ang population of the inmates, whether they are detained or whether they are, are, they are a sentenced prisoner, dapat di siya mula pa sa maximum ng capacity of inmates. Like for example, if a cell is only good for 30 inmates, kinahanglan, dapat 30 lang yun. Um, however, what happens in the Philippines, most especially when the Tokhang and the Oakland Over Barrel was implemented, though crowded na before its implementation, ni sa ka-crowded. 
But we cannot blame also the government simply because wala mapugoy lain pong kabutangan. There is no other physical facilities. And as what I've mentioned, in in constructing a a a new what says prison institution, kinahanglan ba yagod that it should be strategic away from many people. Kaya nga naman, just for in case that they will evade sentence, at least, layo pa silang black one, o dili, makaan to tayo yung civilization. Okay? So, next, there are two treatment. First, you do have secured confinement, and the other one is community-based corrections. So, what is the difference between the two? When you say secured confinement, meaning to say that the rehabilitation program takes in or takes place inside the penal institution, inside the jail, if the years of imprisonment is short, less than six years, less, I mean to say less than three years, or it could be in the Bureau of Corrections if it is more than three years. While, or meanwhile, in your community-based corrections, the rehabilitation program takes place in the community. That is why um, officers like probation officer, pardon officer, parole officer, na asila to supervise, to make sure, to make sure that even if they are in the community, they are serving their sentence in the community, they do still abide strictly with the conditions attached to their temporary release. Next, non-institutional based corrections or the committee based correction is a method of correcting, rehabilitating, and reforming the offenders again without actually going to prison without actually going to prison. Alright? Pero, um, there are also types of clemency, like for example, the executive clemency, na before you can in, before you can um, apply with the community-based correction is, uh, I mean to say, community-based correction, you need to be detained first. Like for example, in the case of pardon, whether it's absolute or conditional, in order for you to qualify in that kind of executive clemency, a number of years of imprisonment are required first before um, before your application will be reviewed if you are qualified or not. And if just for in case you will be given an, a conditional pardon, then that's the time that you will um, be experiencing a reformation and rehabilitation and correction in the community rather than in the institution. So now let's proceed with the advantages of community-based corrections. First, the family members need not be victims also for the imprisonment of a member because the convict can still continue to support his family and not be separated from his children. This is very, very true. Remember, sometimes the um, the incarceration of, of the family member really creates a great impact on the family itself. Most especially if that person being detained or incarcerated is the breadwinner. Like for example, it is the father, or it is the mother, or it is the, the the eldest sibling, so is in charge with the bread and butter at home. Mo na ang may tabo. It really affects the entire family. Good that there is already a community-based corrections. Kaya nga naman, ang may tabo instead of serving their sentence in the institution then they will be serving it in the community. So therefore, they are with their family. Therefore, they are given the opportunity to work. Okay? So if they can work, then they can still provide the basic needs of the family from food to education.
Okay? So, we will continue later. Alright, bye guys!